welcome, I'm Alice Gerdjuk and you're watching Head to Head on UATV. Today we're talking about the newly adopted Polish law, which criminalizes suggestions that Poles were complicit in the Holocaust. Moreover, it bans the so-called Banderite ideology. To explain the international and diplomatic outcomes from this new legislation, we are joined in the studio by Alina Spak, first deputy director of Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello. So, Ms. Slepak, how does this law affect Ukraine-Poland relations? Well, unfortunately, I should say that uh, definitely the law and the fact of that it was signed by the president Andrzej Duda yesterday, in fact, that won't contribute to the cooperation between two countries, definitely. And that exactly what was claimed by the president of Ukraine, that was claimed by the parliament of Ukraine. And that is, in fact, what we can see in the reactions of different politicians, scientists, different institutions, as well as NGO as governmental mm -hmm. uh, in Ukraine. Uh, the law, the fact of its uh, adoption, is definitely very unfriendly towards Ukraine, towards Ukrainian people, and it doesn't include uh, any positive uh, impact in it in itself. So it will definitely cause some problems, mm -hmm. or at least uh, this, some uh, problems in cooperation, in phasic cooperation, namely and even especially on our, in our field, that is the field of history, of estimation of our past, and about the uh, overcoming totalitarian past of our common history, definitely it will uh, stop such a cooperation. Well, you mentioned the reaction of the Ukrainian authorities and uh, the Verkhovna Rada has addressed an appeal to Polish authorities. How could it help to fix the dialogue between the countries? How could this appeal help to to, to keep the discussion ongoing? Uh, the appeal pronounced by the parliament, the, the Verkhovna Rada, in fact, it was addressed to the president of, Pol of Poland, uh, asking not to sign the document itself. As we can see, uh, the, uh, Andrzej Duda ignored, in fact, appeals alike appeal by the president, as well as the appeal by the parliament of Ukraine, and nevertheless he signed the document, the, the law. So we can say that now it's the law, not a draft anymore. And definitely I think that now the parliament, as well as all Minister of Foreign Affairs and all the other, are on their way to look for any other instruments of how we are to build our new co our mm -hmm. cooperation, take it into consideration new uh, new elements and new policies provided by the by Poland yeah if the appeal so if the appeal didn't contribute to the dialogue of the two countries well um, also this law is um, concerns about uh, uh, Banderite ideology and could you explain to our audience what is Banderite ideology and what are the reasons for Poland to be a so strict opponent about it well first of all I should explain maybe the um, novels introduced by the law. That is, uh, first of all, the law uh, uh, bans, or, okay, it uh, denies, it introduces criminal uh, responsibility for those who deny crimes uh, committed by Ukrainian nationalists. So, and that is a problem. That is the terms out of the law. And no one can exactly explain what is meant under the crimes of Ukrainian nationalists. Who are Ukrainian nationalists? Uh, meant under the law, I mean, within, in the frame mm -hmm. of the law. Why the period of time 1825, 1850 is being used in the law? So, in fact, what the law does, it... Uh, put imprisonment, a punishment on anyone who will deny something, no one can explain what. And that is a very, it's a really huge threat because, uh, for example, our Ukrainian historians, as not only historians, but any people, uh, they don't really know what they can say or what they cannot. So what we really see about the law is that the law, uh, in our understanding, uh, violate human rights. The freedom First of, of all, speech. First of all, the freedom of speech. Next, the freedom of uh, scientific research, of academic research. And that's why we, as the Ukrainian part, Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance, for example, we can't guarantee any safety for Ukrainian scientists taking part in any international uh, conferences or other meetings. So that's a problem with that law. On the Polish territory, you mean this na this meetings on the Polish territory, so Firstly. they could be yeah Firstly. they could be arrested or something. Especially taking into account that a lot of Ukrainian nationalists are recognized as national heroes in Ukraine and in Ukrainian history, so that confronts the uh, the Polish approach to this question. But um, 
how do Poles benefit from this law? Well, I think that uh, the law was a kind of a result of the longer discussions that took place in the society, in Polish society, fastly for the recent decades. And uh, unfortunately, we, what we can see, and uh, we see every day, that uh, the worsening and the, the crisis between Ukrainians and Polish society they are, uh, is uh, more and more deep with last years. And first of all, it was influenced strongly by uh, we should definitely say it, but our enemies, the Russia Federation and the Kremlin, they had huge informational campaigns so as to split to our friendly uh, countries. And that was the uh, conflict that was, taken, that was taking place between Ukrainian and Polish population in the, while the Second World War. It was definitely used so as to uh, introduce lo lots of manipulations, lots of uh, false facts, lots of uh, other ways so as to split as to uh, divide our, to divide yeah. our, our uh, partnership basically partner, especially after the um, revolution of dignity here in ukraine especially with the beginning of the war with the russia federation in the eastern part of ukraine so the history is being used as a method of uh, modern policy and that's very sad Next, are there any um, instances of uh, russian disinformation and manipulation campaign well, uh, in fact, it took place 10 years ago, many years, uh -huh. even more years ago, for example, where uh, there are some uh, even NGOs financed directly from Moscow in Poland who were, on the very beginning, they were very, very active at uh, dealing with the past, at uh, introducing different in mass media and Polish mass media, different informational campaigns, whatever. Definitely, at the moment, there are no such evident um, evident uh, examples of such policy because maybe because there are no need because the society the temperature of the society of Polish society is very high it's very anti-ukrainian at the moment in or enough in the moment and what is very interesting is that different uh, polls for example show a very interesting picture that you can ask any poll what is a uh, volume strategy yeah, or what do you know about that conflict? And no one knows, and in fact, people know uh, their knowledge is very low, but still their attitude towards Ukrainians is rather bad. So they do accuse Ukrainians of all those crimes, so they can't explain what, what the crime is. Mm -hmm. And so that is a problem is, is kind of deeper. And what we do can see with that, or what we can see right now with that law, it's just the result of all those campaigns that were developed uh, recently. So it just inflames the hate uh, between nations. Yeah, definitely. Well, how did the institution that you represent, uh, Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance, react on this? Well, you know, on the law, basically. Uh, being an institution responsible for dealing with the past and for our common totalitarian uh, past, firstly. Uh, we do appreciate the cooperation with different institutions. And we did understand that um, the cooperation with Polish institutions, alike institutions, with well, Polish is very important for us because uh, we are to overcome that conflict so as to start a new page in our relations. And that's why in 2015, that is from the very beginning of our activities of new epoch in the activity of the Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance, uh, we addressed uh, Polish Institute of National Remembrance uh, with a suggestion so as to create a platform where historians from both countries can meet and uh, discuss those, those hard pages, different un unknown or uh, pages of our common history. Mm -hmm. And in fact, such a platform that is a forum of Ukrainian Polish Forum of Historians was created. It had uh, five meetings for these years. Uh, both on Ukrainian territory as well as on Polish one. And uh, uh, the last, for example, was in, in October 2017, and it took place in uh, Ukraine, in Cherkasa region. And now we say, that is yesterday, we addressed to, to the, um, our colleagues, Polish colleagues, that we can't continue our cooperation on this, uh, on the, on this exact uh, way, because we just can't guarantee safety for our participants. So that is we do true. that. So we do say that okay, we are we do understand the importance of such discussion. Mm -hmm. And while our main idea is uh, uh, the history is a matter of historians, not politicians. So let's discuss, let's talk, let's find some way out. But uh, nowadays, for us, it seems to be impossible, at least on the territory of Poland. So we do invite everyone 
who is uh, wise enough to communicate, to have discussion, to talk. We are open to do that here in Ukraine, mm -hmm. but not in Poland. Well, continuing the discussion about the controversy of our historical topics, some analysts are pointing on a similarity of this newly adopted Polish law and the Ukrainian legislation on the legal status and honoring the memory of fighters for Ukraine's independence in 20th century. Could you comment on that? I think uh, I can say that it's quite a, it's a manipulation. It has, they have, two, yeah, those it, laws are totally... I would totally, be grateful if you would explain okay, uh, the two Ukrainian those laws law. Are, to are totally different. Uh, Ukrainian law stating that uh, Ukrainian underground movement and members of such movement, they are, they, now they have status of fighters for independence. That's it. And that law doesn't foresee any criminal or even administrative responsibility for any, any denial punishment. and for any, any so penalty. nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just state that uh, oh, the strike was legal, the, the struggle was legal, that's it. While Polish law, that the law was adopted, it introduced criminal responsibility for denial of some crimes. And this, that's is, the this is the crucial difference. Okay, is this law adopted for good and all, or is there still any chance to somehow rewind it? As we do know, the president of Poland, that is Andrzej Duda, he uh, addressed the, consti uh, the constitutional uh, court of Poland, so as to check the law, if it corresponds to the constitution, to other laws, and if it corresponds to human rights and all the other international standards. And I think that what we are to do now is just to wait what will the, the courts say. But I, I'm not really optimistic, because it's not only about the law, as I tried to explain, but it's about the society and it's about the, and the attitude. Yes. And that's the problem. And, in, and at the moment, the attitudes towards Ukraine, towards Ukrainian national underground, towards Ukrainian history, becomes a very strong, a top uh, theme, in fact, in all uh, politician discussions. It, it will be an instrument in uh, while elections, in electoral campaigns, and that's the problem. That's why it's not only about the law, but mm -hmm. the problem is much deeper. Well, this is the sad conclusion, but unfortunately, that's all we have time for. And thank you so much for this interesting conversation. Thank you. That was Alina Spak, first deputy director of Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance. Thank you for watching and stay with UATV.